representatives of all nations spoke of him. For the United States, Warren Austin. It is fitting that we who sit here charged with the grave responsibility of maintaining peace among nations should pay tribute to this great Indian leader who over the years has done so much to bring home to his fellow countrymen the moral and spiritual lessons which are essential for the achievement of world peace and brotherhood. For China, Dr. Tsiang. In recent decades, no other man typified the wisdom and the nobility of the old continent so well as Mahatma Gandhi. De La Tournelle for France. Gandhi, he said, Gandhi was the man who brought the principles of nonviolence into the political world. For Pakistan, Sir Mohammed Safrullah Khan. His tragic death constitutes as grievous a loss to Pakistan as it is to India. Philip Noel Baker for the United Kingdom. He was the man who said that faith transcends reason. That God has his footstool where lives the poorest and the loneliest and the lost. But our conviction that Gandhi has not lived and has not died in vain. And finally, for India itself, Mr. Gopalaswamy Iyengar. Our hearts are filled with an unspeakable grief. A great tragedy has overtaken us. The greatest, perhaps, in Indian history in recent years. 
a matter of fact, we have lost our biggest man. If I may venture to say so, the world has lost its tallest man judged by our moral standards. And so the nations bowed their heads before the memory of all that had been and was represented by Mahatma Gandhi. And lead kindly light, Gandhi's favorite hymn was sung. And all over the world, hundreds of millions wept because he was gone. Who was he then, this man, that all the world should mourn him? A physically slight man, five feet five inches tall, who wore a homespun cotton loincloth like the poorest of the Indians, sometimes weighing less than a hundred pounds. A man who died possessing only sandals, a pen, a book, and a dollar watch. Who spoke simply with no attempt to hypnotize. Nobody will take in English, 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 our food. Only one man. He can't reproduce the same thing twice. If he does, then it becomes a feat of memory, but not a, a thing coming out of the deepest recesses of his soul. A man who led an army of some 400 million to victory without raising a gun. A man without the power of wealth or bombs or guns or physical glory. What then was his power? The clues lie in his life. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born in Porbanda, October 2nd, 1869, a small state in western India. As it takes many rivers flowing together to make a sea, so many rivers flow together to make a great man. There is the time in which he is born. There is the place, there is the family. There is the country and its traditions which form him. For a great man must not only come to life, there must also be a people to accept him. Here then was the house where Gandhi began his life. And the country was India. Here, as in these ancient ruins and these temples, is the memory that India was a great empire, a cradle of civilization, its beginning dating before 3,500 B.C. That long before Western civilization began, India had a greatness in art and medicine and logic and poetry, drama and law. But its finest greatness lay in its immense researches into the meaning of existence, the truth behind appearance. And its great men were its men with a surpassing genius for teaching and living that truth. Thus in these temples and on these pillars are records. The West found power in nature and called it the atom. India made its researches into the inner world of man and called that power the Atma. The man who lived the life that demonstrates the power of the Atma is called a Mahatma, a great soul. There was another power in India, the British Empire epitomized at the ceremony in 1911 by the visiting Queen Mary and King George V. Here in Surat in the 1700s, they established a trading company. And with Robert Clive, who lived here, further established the East India Company. At 18, Gandhi went to England, to London, to study law. And there in the West read the two books in which he found the ideas which he felt, if used, would change history. The first was the Bhagavad Gita, known by memory in every village in India. The Gita is one of the most ancient sacred books of India. It recalled to Gandhi the ancient wisdom and beauty of his country. And he called it the Book of Books for the Knowledge of Truth. And Gandhi found the ideas of his own in the Gita to explode into the tremendous force of his life. As a